Hey guys, it's Belinda. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between rabbit groups and rabbit nested families. We're going to be comparing them under five different categories. Uh, the speed of creating them, tagability, flexibility, excluding elements and file size. So here I have a simple Revit project that has 10 different exam rooms. I've populated one of the exam rooms with equipment. There's a patient bed, uh, an overbed table, a chair, head wall, monitor, bracket, a sharps disposal, a cart, um, a stool, a workstation, glove dispenser, and that's it. That's 12 different elements in that one room. And I want to populate all the other rooms with the same equipment. I'm going to select all of them, filter out everything but specialty equipment, and then I'm going to create a group. I'm going to name this group exam room, and then just simply copy it to all the other 10 rooms. Now, very conveniently, all these rooms are exactly the same size. They're Five of them are a different angle, but they're still the same size. So I'm easily able to just copy all these groups to the rooms. And within a few seconds, I was able to populate all 10 rooms with the equipment. Now, the thing with groups is that if I ever make a modification to one of them, say I move the workstation to the other wall, it changes the location in all the rooms. Now we're going to create a nested family and populate all 10 rooms with the same uh, equipment. I'm going to go to new and create a new nested family. The problem is that I can't just copy and paste uh, all the elements because they're not compatible. You get an error down here saying you can't copy between a family and a project, unfortunately. So what I have to do is open up each of these pieces of equipment and then load it into my nested family that I'm creating. I'm gonna just speed through this. I'm gonna roughly align it to where I think it was placed in the project. So now I have all 12 pieces of equipment in my nested family. I'm now gonna save it and then load it into my project. So you can see that I had to approximate the location of these elements. So the workstation and the glove dispenser are not up against the wall. So the width of the room is 15 feet, 11 inches. So I'm just going to create a line, set that to 15 feet, 11 inches, move it up a little so it doesn't conflict with the door. I'm going to bring it back to the project and overwrite the existing nested family. Now the same thing that we did for the groups, I'm going to copy this nested family into all nine other exam rooms. So you can see that creating the nested family obviously took a lot more time than creating the group and I wasn't able to use the walls as a reference so I just had to approximate it, go back and forth, take some dimensions and also loading each family into my nested family took a bit of time too. So groups was a clear winner under speed of creation. Next, let's look at tagability. So if we go to the group that I created, I can easily tag all the elements in that group without any issues. But when it comes to tagging the nested family, I'm not able to. And the way to solve this is to go back into your nested family into each element that you brought in and make them shared. I'm going to open up the chair family and under the properties, I'm going to check the box that says the shared parameter is enabled. I'm going to do it for the table, the glove dispenser, workstation, the stool, the light, all the other elements included in this nested family. A little more cumbersome than the group. Once all the elements are made shared, I'm then going to overwrite the existing family and all the shared sub subcomponents. And I'm finally able to tag all of them by hitting the tab button. So when it comes to tagability to groups is a winner. You're still able to tag the nested family. It just takes much longer. 
Now let's discuss groups and nested families in terms of flexibility. Here I have the exam room group, all 10 of them. This was created under the ideal condition that all exam rooms are the same, but you know that's not gonna happen in your project. So say for example, the five rooms on the right are not 15 feet, 11 inches in width. They are a foot bigger. You can see that the glove dispensers and the workstations are no longer up against the wall. But if I ever move them in one group, it's gonna move them in the other group. So all the families on the left now have to be different from the families on the right. So what I need to do is select this group, duplicate it, and then move the glove dispensers and the workstations a foot back so that they're up against the wall. Once that's done, I'm going to select all other four groups on the right hand side to the new model group that we just created. Now, if I ever move this cart further towards the door, it's not going to show the same location in the other group because they're both independent groups right now. So if I ever have to make a change to one, I have to duplicate my work and make that same change to every other group that I've created. Now the next issue with these groups is say for example, these top four exam rooms don't have to have a bed. They need a stretcher in the room instead of a bed. I need to now create two more groups in order to switch out that bed to a stretcher. I'll also switch out the family below it to that exam room three group. Now, since this is independent, I need to make the same change to the other two groups on the right hand side. Now, can you see the issue? In a very short amount of time, we have gone from just a single model group to four model groups just to accommodate slight changes. It's quickly gotten much tougher to keep track of changes and make global changes too. Let's look at what would happen if we had to make the same changes to a nested family. On the right hand side, our wall moved out a foot. So what we need to do is create a reference plane and then create a distance parameter, which we'll call width for width of the room. Let this be an instance so it can vary from room to room. I'll then align and lock the glove dispenser and the workstation to that reference plane we created. We'll bring this back into our project and you can see here these tiny arrowheads. Those allow you to change the location of the glove dispenser and the workstation depending on the width of the room. But the good thing is that they're all still the same family. Next, we're going to see how to deal with the bed versus stretcher issue. So in this nested family, I'm going to create an instance of the stretcher. I'm then going to create two types under this nested family one for the bed and one for the stretcher. I'll then create a visibility parameter and call it bed viz and that's going to be type based and not instance based. I'm then going to select the stretcher and create another visibility parameter called this stretcher viz and I'm going to have them both sitting in the same location. When I go to the family types under the stretcher type, I'm going to turn off the bed and under the bed type, I'm going to turn off the stretcher and we still have just a single family. So when I select the nested family in exam room one, under properties, I'm going to switch it out from a bed to a stretcher family. I'll do the same thing in exam rooms two, 10 and nine. All the other nested families still show the bed. Since they're all still the same nested family, if I move the uh, cart further towards the door, that cart location was updated in all the families. You don't have to worry about missing a particular room or duplicating that work that you've just done. Even though groups won the first two categories that we were talking about, the flexibility of nested families is a huge advantage. In your project, it's highly unlikely that all rooms are going to be the same. So having a nested family instead of a group is going to give you that flexibility to move certain items and uh, to adjust them to fit the room. You also have this peace of mind when working with nested families that your updates are going to show up in all the rooms. When you have multiple groups to deal with, you can very easily skip certain groups and forget to work on them. Now let's look at excluding elements. So in this group, if I do not want to show this overbed table, I can just tab, right click and exclude the element. 
I can then restore this group to the original uh, version if needed. The problem is that if I ever do copy this group over, it, the table is also going to be excluded in that group, which could cause some issues. When it comes to nested families, the way to exclude certain elements is through visibility parameters. Under graphics, I'm going to select on the little uh, box under visible and create a table viz parameter, make it instance based. And you can see that shows up under both my family types. And then when I click on it under properties, scroll all the way down and you can see a table viz parameter. So if I uncheck it, it just turns off the table in that room, but it's still visible in all the other rooms. So when it comes to excluding elements, I would say that a nested family has a slight advantage over groups because it's just a smarter method of working, like using a visibility parameter versus just excluding the element from the group. Now, when it comes to file size, you saw how easily we went from one group to four groups just because we needed to make minor modifications. So by using that logic, we can say that having a dozen groups in your project is probably going to make it much heavier than having a single nested family. It's probably going to slow down your processing time and make your file size much larger too. So all in all, I'd say nested families is a clear winner over groups. If you have a really small project, I'd say just go for groups. Um, but for most of the time, I would personally choose nested families over them. Let me know what you think about this video and if you have any other recommendations for Revit or AutoCAD tutorials. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.